Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the second episode of Java 101. In this episode, we are going to get an introduction into variables. In case you don't already know, Java is an object-oriented programming language, which means that it deals with objects and variables. That will make sense in a few minutes when I introduce you to all the different types of uh, primitive data types, and we actually try writing a couple. So I'm going to go ahead and make a list of each of the different um, primitive data types. Basically, primitive data types or literals are the built-in data types to Java. They're not classes or objects. They're just they're um, they're not just it'll it would it will make more sense when you learn about classes. But just assume for now that it's it's just a, a type of variable. So the first primitive data type is a byte. The byte is the smallest primitive data type in Java. You're not really going to come across it too much. It's just a good thing to know. I believe, please don't quote me on this, but I think 128 is the maximum value for a byte, but whatever it is, I know it's very small. The next are going to be short, uh, sorry, are going to be short, int, and long. Um, an int is basically an integer, so it could be a number like 1 or 234 or 9,274. Uh, integer does have an upper and lower limit, which is where short and long come in. Short is basically a short integer. It has a smaller bounds than an integer, while a long is a longer integer that has greater bounds. Um, you're going to come into, you're going to come across integers a lot. Uh, short, not too much. The only reason why you would really use a short is for uh, memory conservation. But when you're writing these kinds of programs, it's not terribly important. If you come across a short, you just know that it's a shorter uh, integer with more confined bounds. Uh, longs, you may come across. Longs are integers that. Um, that are longer, so you can have a longer integer. Um, the next ones are going to be doubles and or just double and float. Uh, double is basically um, an integer with uh, decimal place. So, in uh, so a good example could be 1.2 or 3,900, 3,097.92. And so on. Uh, a float is a floating point number. Um, not you will come across floats. They work very similar to uh, doubles. So just see above. Um, they are also decimal places. Now uh, remaining is char. Uh, char is or car, whatever you want to call it. It's a character, and so that could be something like a. Uh, e, or even numbers like 2, not, uh, 11 would not be correct, but, um, uh, just, uh, they're just characters, and let me just make sure that that's everything, int, double, float, short, long, byte, oh, boolean, of course, and we can't forget about boolean, which is true or false, that may not seem incredibly useful, but you will come across it a lot in, uh, Java, and when we get into some Boolean logic, that will be very important. Boolean is just a value that is either true or false. Now, the um, data types that we're going to be using a lot are going to be int, double, and Boolean. Uh, the other ones you will come across, just not as often. So, uh, right now, I'm going to show you guys how to declare some of these primitive data types. These will be very helpful uh, in storing values like the user's name, uh, the amount of health they have, maybe the amount of money they have. And there's one more thing I'm going to add on is string. You notice that uh, I did not capitalize any other uh, words, but I did capitalize string. String is not a primitive data type. It is a class that internally uses a character array. You don't need to know anything about that, but it's not. it doesn't work the same as integer, double, and boolean. Uh, but strings are very important for, I mean, you can only imagine what you would do. And in fact, you already used a string. This is actually a string. That's the quick way of making a string. So we're going to go ahead and declare a couple of variables. And we're going to put them at the top right here uh, because we're going to store something like their money and their health and their 
uh, you know, different things like that. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to store their health, which we're going to keep as an integer. When you declare a variable, you write it like this. Type name equals value. So if we're declaring an integer called health, we can say int health equals, oh, and you need your semicolon, equals, and let's set it at 10. What we're doing is we're declaring an integer. The type is int, and you'll notice that it's uh, purple. That's syntax highlighting because int is a reserved word in Java, represents an integer. Uh, we're naming it health, and we're setting health equal to 10. Uh, the reason why there's a yellow line is because we're not actually using that variable, but we will soon. Um, let's say we wanted to make a double that represents the amount of money that they have. Double money equals, then for a double, you can declare it in two ways. Let's say that they start out with $20. You could declare it as 20, but let's say that they want to start out with $19.99. So you could do 19.99. Uh, another thing, you may see this in code sometimes, if you put a capital D after a number, that basically just means double. So you definitely don't need that, but if you see it, uh, that's what it means. Also, if you put an L after that, uh, after a number, that would be long. So if you ever see it, that's what it means. Uh, finally, as far as Booleans, um, you're not going to declare too many Booleans um, yourself, but in Boolean logic, like if statements and loops, you're going to use it a lot. So I'm going to leave Boolean alone for a bit, uh, but we will get back to that in the next episode. Finally, let's declare a string called name. So you're going to do string name equals, when we declare a string, we put it in double quotes, and we're going to call the name Pogo. Notice that I typed string with a capital letter and it did not turn purple. String is a class. It's not a primitive data type. So it works differently than uh, integers, doubles, and booleans. Uh, but since it's so important, we're going to learn it right now. Just know that there is a difference and you'll better understand the difference later. So the um, last thing that we'll do is I'll show you how to... Uh, you know, actually use these variables just as far as quickly printing them out. Um, and if you ever come across any of these other variables, uh, you instantiate them in the same way. Type name equals value, and you got to have your semicolon at the end of the line to tell Java uh, that you're done with that line. So if I go ahead and run this, or sorry, let's go ahead and add one more line and print ln, and let's say that we want to print out the health. So we put in health like here, and println will take that integer called health, and it'll print out its value. So if I run it, it will say, welcome to adventure, and then 10, because I am referencing the health variable that's defined right there. Since it's equal to 10, it prints out 10. Another thing is you can reassign variables. So let's say that they uh, get some extra health. We can say health equals 12. And then if we go to print out health again, you'll see 10 and then 12. Uh, we initially health was 10, so it accessed health and it got 10 back. Then we set health equal to 12. And when it was accessed again, it was now 12. One important thing to note is you can't type anything like that. Uh, you already defined an integer called health, so doing this would be defining an integer that you already made. You can't use the same identifier or the same name uh, in the same scope. Basically, don't define two variables with the same name, or else it won't work. Um, finally, just some quick... Uh, Shorthand that you can use for this, plus plus will add one. That's where I guess C plus plus got its name. Minus minus will subtract one. Uh, plus equals, um, you can add to the current value. Minus equals, you can guess, and it even works with division and multiplication. So uh, that is about it for this video. We got a brief introduction to variables and we learned how to declare some variables. Uh, in the next video, we are going to look into 
I believe, getting user input. Basically, uh, asking the user for some input from the console, the user types it in, and then we can handle the data from the user. And that's going to be, of course, very important in an adventure game for figuring out where the user wants to go. After that, we're going to move into some Boolean logic with if statements, and eventually we'll also get into some loops, which are pretty awesome. So that's all for this video. As always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, please click the like button, and I will see you guys soon with the next episode of Java 101. Bye, guys.